Alrighty, let's go ahead and start chatting about the nature of the place. We're going to be talking about physical geography of our Midwestern region today. Um, so, Hassan, do you want to go ahead and start us out reading at the top of the page? All right, top of page 341, first paragraph. The nation of the place physical ge geography. geography. At first glance, the Midwest seems entirely, entirely. Western areas are covered with prairie, prairie, which is mainly flatland. But a closer look reveals that much of the Midwest has gentle hopes. Some areas have even some areas even have hills or mountains. All right. So as we can see. Our Midwestern region has lots of different types of geography and terrain. That's that physical geography. It's what you can see with your eyeballs. All right, um, beautiful. Next paragraph. Some famous highlands in the Midwest are Ozark Mountains, Black Mountains, Sand 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 Mountains, Travel hard. Today, people often vacation in the Ozarks. Some enjoy outdoor activities such as hiking, camping, and exploring caves and nesting. Others like visiting places in Branson, Missouri. This city has many theaters that celebrate the traditional culture of the Ozarks. Very good. Um, Haley Hahn, read the next paragraph for me. The Black Hills of South Dakota are another famous highland region. These hills were called black because of the tree covering their hills. The Sioux. Sioux tribe believed that the hills were scared. scared. Sacred. Sacred. As, as American settlers moved west, the U.S. government promised Sue. Sue. That, that they could remain in the hills, but then go with them. The Sioux were forced off the land. Very good. Uh, we'll go Kaylee on. And the Black Hills are two important memorials. Mount Washburn has the space of both continents off into the wall. Many Americans visit the mountains and region. About 10 miles away is an ancient calling of Crazy Horse. He was so a Sioux? Sioux war chef who fought against America, American forces that Mount Man is still slowly being called into thunder in that. Very good. So you can look there and you see that uh, Mount Rushmore is in Keystone, South Dakota. Each face is about 60 feet tall. So it's pretty big. Pretty, pretty, pretty big. Okay, um, let's talk about ooh, climate and weather. I was excited about this. You're freaking me out. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> climate and weather. Since? Since the Midwest. Midwest lands. Lies in the middle. Lies in the middle for northern America. America is its weather change, changes. Changes greatly. Greatly for from season to season. Season to season, the states of the Midwest. States of the Midwest are. Far, far from, from a ocean. Mm -hmm. Oceans help carry keep keep temperatures temperatures, temperatures from oh, very good. You're going. You got it. Extreme extreme heat or er, changes. What changes? We're gonna stop for real fast though, because I want to talk about this a little bit. So. Weather is um, affected by a lot of different things, okay? Yes. Now, we know that the Midwest, actually, let me get my map. We know that the Midwest lies 
smack dab in the middle of the United States. So there's not really an ocean around it, right? Oh, wow. So we have our map. Our Midwestern states are out, um, you know, like Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, the Dakotas, all of those smack dab here in the middle of our map. That's what we're going to be looking at. So is there an ocean anywhere near this? No. No, there is not. That affects it. The weather changes really just so very much from season to season. Whereas we might get, you know, a little bit of a dip in temperatures as our seasons move on. We don't get super duper hot summer, super duper cold winter. We have a pretty mild climate, but the weather changes really greatly from season to season. And it's because the states of the Midwest are far away from oceans. The oceans help keep temperatures from extreme changes. Well, if you don't have an ocean anywhere near you, you don't have anything keeping you from those extreme changes in the weather. Um, so we know that the summers in the Midwest are usually very hot, okay? Uh, winters are cold and snowy, and the northern plains and areas around the Great Lakes are regularly buried under many inches of snow. Even fall can be shortened by early snowfall. Spring is the wildest season of all. Warm and cold days often follow each other, especially in the southern part of the Midwest. Violent weather may result. Sometimes warm air swirls up from the Gulf of Mexico. If it means cold air from Canada, the region will get severe thunderstorms. And you can see there a picture of a tornado violently spinning. Um, we get hurricanes here in Florida. We don't get a ton of tornadoes. We occasionally will get something. We get a lot of hurricanes. They get tornadoes regularly. Damien, will you read the next paragraph for me? Many parts. Many parts of the plains are known as known for the tornadoes. Mm -hmm. Kansas and Nebraska lie in Tornado Valley. Because there are a few hills in the Midwest to break up the storms, thunderstorms and tornadoes can travel many miles. People in the Midwest plain plan. In a, huh? You said plain plan. In advance for tornadoes, many houses on the plains have storm cellars. These rooms dug into the ground give ref give refuge refuge to people during severe weather. Weathermen are now better able to track storms. They warn people ahead of time to head into their cellars. So, Kansas and Nebraska are in an area of the country called Tornado Alley. Mm -hmm. um, this is because there are not hills in the Midwest, in this part of the Midwest, to break up the storms. You know, you got a mountainous area, you even have a different climate, it can break it up. But whenever you think about Kansas and Nebraska, think about it this way. It's flat land as far as the eye can see. Okay, you can see for miles. So there's nothing that would break up these big violent storms that come through. And again, that severe weather comes whenever you get that cold air from Canada meeting the warm air from Mexico and it all just goes just bonkers in the Midwest. Whenever that cold air from Canada comes down, the warm air from the Gulf of Mexico comes up and it comes to be this very, very scary event of weather. Um, let's look at page 343. <laughs> Donovan, would you like to read? The flat lines that love storms travel far along this the Midwest, it's vast. Vast farms. The Midwest er, it enjoys 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 many northern natural resources. Natural resources. Resources. Uh, huge. Huge. Spreads. Spreads of uh, arable. Arable lands are the most. Uh, um, obvious. Obvious farms can range, mm -hmm. range crops and arable. Arable. Arable lands. Arable lands. You're, you're right. 
each Midwest Midwest starts mm -hmm. has air of this good also soil soil mm -hmm. and yeah. fairly fairly good regular regular rain has a rest result result people Res raise. Raise many crops in Amos. Very good. Um, Ronald, you haven't read yet. Several states also have minerals that can be mined. Minnesota Masabi Range. Masabi Range is rich with iron ore since it's found close to Lake Super. The ore can, the ore can easily be shipped to ore process. processing. Processing. In the next paragraph. Okay. The northern forest is much wood. Furniture and paper are made from these wood. Minnesota's legendary hero, Paul Bunyan. Bunyan was famous for logging in the state pool. Very good. Caleb. The prairie is capturing rivers east, rivers running through the Midwest are another great resource base. First, provided transportation base. Then, during the 1800s, the rivers were used to power many mills. Now boats travel up and down the rivers. People enjoy fishing and sightseeing on them. Very good. So it says, we, we go back up to the picture. Wheatgrass is an important, sorry. We, <laughs> oh. Wheat is a kind of grass that's important source for um, food worldwide. Wheat seeds are grounded to make flour. Flour makes pasta. Who loves pasta? Me. Me. And you know what I love about this class? Our conversations always somehow turn to food. So, you know. All right. Also, take note of the word arable. Um, that is a bolded word. Um you just want to make sure that you understand the arable land. They, their farmers can raise crops on arable land. Um, also, take note of Lake Superior. It talks about Lake Superior. The large lake is used for shipping iron ore, like Ronald read for us. Um, rivers used, sorry, rivers were used as a resource by providing transportation and powering a lot of mills. Um, and then this, the rivers now are used for traveling, fishing and sightseeing. Take a peek at the map on page 344. All right, so this map, what's the title of it? Someone raise your hand and tell me the title. Beautiful. Resources and products of the Midwest. Of the Midwest. Correct. Um, take a look down at the key. We see blueberries, mm -hmm. cattle and dairy. What else? Cherries. Say it out, cherries. And scene. Thank you. Shh. <laughs> so yeah, raise your hand if you think there's a lot of resources. There are. We see all types of different resources, even different resources. Some of them are the same as we have here in the southeast and as they have in the northeast, but some of them are different. And of course, you know that we will eventually utilize this map again. So take a little peek at it and see what's kind of see what's up. And then I have a video that I'm going to show you guys about how tornadoes are formed. Yeah.